Let us pray. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we exalt your name, we magnify you. You are the great King. You are the Almighty God. You are the omnipotent God. We say all glory, all honor, all adorations be to your name in Jesus' name. Loving Father and gracious God, once again we thank you for the opportunity and the privilege to go into your word. We are asking and we are praying you will open our eyes to behold wondrous thing out of your word in Jesus' name. We thank you, loving and gracious God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And the people of God say, Amen. You remember for quite some time, we have been talking about strengthened mind. And we have been looking at the evidences of a strengthened mind. Number one, we have seen mind of Christ. Number two, we have seen quick understanding. And number three is understanding mysteries. And that is what we are considering now. We have been talking about understanding mystery for quite some time. We've seen how Daniel was able to know the dream of Nebuchadnezzar, even when the person that dreamed the dream himself has forgotten. Not only that he was able to tell the king the dream, he was also able to interpret the dream. And the interpretation of the dream is what we are looking at now. We have seen how he interpreted the head of gold, who happened to be Nebuchadnezzar himself, which happened to be the kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar himself. And we have seen in that kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar, Babylonian Empire, that Nebuchadnezzar was the first king then followed by his son, Ifu Merudite. And after his son was Bessasa, the grandson. And you remember God had proof through the mouth of Jeremiah that the whole world will serve Nebuchadnezzar. Not only that they will serve Nebuchadnezzar, that they will also serve his son. Not only that they will serve his son, but they will also serve his son's son. And so the whole world served Nebuchadnezzar. And after Nebuchadnezzar, evil Merodite took over. After the evil Merodite, then Bessasa took over, who happened to be the grandson of Nebuchadnezzar. We have seen all this. We have considered all these things. And we have seen how Bessasa, after tasted wine, was intoxicated. And asked them to go and bring the vessels of gold and vessels of silver of the temple that is in Jerusalem that have been carried to Babylon. He asked them to go and bring all those vessels. And he drank wine out of there. Himself, his princes, and his concubines. And God became angry. And a hand appeared that wrote a writing upon the wall and the king doesn't understand the meaning all the wise men of babylon didn't understand the meaning eventually they brought daniel and daniel was able to read the writing daniel chapter 5 
Daniel chapter 5. Open your Bible. I read verse 25. Are you there? And this is the writing that was written. Many, many take a person. Verse 26. This is the interpretation of the thing. Many, God had numbered thy kingdom and finish it. Verse 27. Take it, thou art way in the balances and had found one thing. Look at verse 28. Verse 28. Paris, thy kingdom is divided and is given to Medes and Persia. Then commanded Bersasa that they clothed Daniel with scarlet and put a chain of gold about his neck and made the proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. Verse 30. In that night was Bersasa. The king of the Cardian slain. Verse 31. And Darius the Median took the kingdom, being about three score and two years old. Come back to the interpretation of the dream of Daniel. Daniel chapter 2. Are you there? I read verse 37. Thou, O king, art a king of kings, and the God of heaven hath given thee a kingdom, power, and strength, and glory. And wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beast of the feed and the fowl of the heaven hath he given into thy hand, and hath made thee ruler over them all. Thou art this head of gold. So the image that Nebuchadnezzar had saw in his dream, and that the head was the head of gold, that said Nebuchadnezzar is the head of gold. Look at verse 39. And there shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee. Another thought and another thought kingdom of brass, which I bear rule over all the earth. Now the kingdom of sliver, because the image, the breast was of sliver. And the hand, the Bible, the, the Daniel said that kingdom will be inferior, inferior to Nebuchadnezzar. And we see eventually after the reign of the grandson, towards the end of the reign of the grandson, Bersasa, Daniel said his kingdom had been divided and had been given to the Medes and Parthians. Come back again to Daniel chapter 5. Daniel chapter 5. Verse 28. Paris, thy kingdom is divided and is given to the Medes and Parthians. So the kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar, which Imo, evil Merodic inherited, after evil Merodic, the kingdom was transferred to Bersasa. And towards the end of the life of Bersasa, 
Daniel now said, the kingdom has been divided and given to Medes and Persians. So today, in the name of Jesus, we'll be looking at the kingdom of Medes and Persians. What are we looking today? Kingdom of Medes and Persia. Now let's now read from Daniel chapter 5, verse 28 to 31. Daniel chapter 5, from verse 28 to 31. Paris, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Then commanded Bersasa, and they clothed Daniel with scarlet, and put a chain of gold about his neck, and made the proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. In that night, somebody say in that night, in that night was Bersasa the king of the Chaldeans slain, and Darius the Median took the kingdom, being about three hundred and two years old. Now there is something very, very important that I want to say here. When you read the book of Daniel. The book of Daniel is not arranged in chronological order. The writer of the book of Daniel is not concerned about the time when each event occurred. The writer of the book of Daniel is concerned about the events that happened and not the timing. is concerned about the lessons to learn from the events that happen, not how they happen in chronological order. That at the back of our mind, we want to read that our text again, Daniel chapter 5, from verse 28 to 31. Let's read. Verse 28. Paris, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persia. Then commanded Bersasa, and they clothed Daniel with sacklet and put a chain of gold about his neck and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. In that night was Bersasa the king of the Cadian slave, and Darius the Median took the kingdom being about three score and two years old. If you look at this, our test, it shows as if Darius became the king immediately after Bersasa was key. But no. Darius did not become the king of Media immediately of Medes. Immediately Bersasa was key. But because what Daniel was interested, who happened to be the writer, what Daniel was interested in was the lesson that he wants us to learn during the reign of Darius. Because during the reign of Darius, 
Obnosius' decree was made that nobody should ask anything of God. Nobody should pray any prayer. And based on that obnoxious decree, it was said that anybody that prayed to anybody or any God will be thrown into the den of lion. And Daniel made up his mind that whatever happened, he's going to pray. Daniel chapter 6, verse 10. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his window being opened in his chamber towards Jerusalem. He kneeled down upon his knee three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before God as he did before. As a result of Daniel's disobedience to this obnoxious decree, he was thrown into the den of lion. Look at Daniel chapter 6, verse 16. Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lion. Now the king spake and said to Daniel, Thy God, whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. The following morning, they went to the den of lion. The king went to the den of lion where he has thrown Daniel. And they discovered that Daniel was not key by the lion. Verse 19. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste unto the den of lion. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said unto, Dan unto, uh, said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God, whom thou servest continually, able to deliver thee from the lion? Then said Daniel unto the king, O my God has sent his angel, and I saw the lion's mouth, that they have not hurt me, for as much as before him, innocence was found in me and also before thee have i done no hurt verse 23 then was the king exceeding glad for him and commanded that they should take daniel out of the thing so daniel was taken up out of the thing and no manner of ought was found upon Daniel because he believed in his God. So what Daniel wants us to learn about the reign of Darius was that obnoxious decree he made and how in that condition, in that environment, in that situation, he was still faithful to God. And as a result of his faithfulness, God was able to protect him from lion's attack. When you look at Daniel from chapter 1, the Bible is, the book is written to tell us about the faithful children of God who serve God in difficult conditions. Now, number two, the Bible was teaching us how the kingdom of God was brought down to replace 
the heading kingdom by the faithful servants of God. That was the only lesson that Daniel was after. The book of Daniel was after. And was also telling us about other kingdoms, other kingdoms, other kingdoms, other kingdoms that will come. And now the kingdom of God will wipe out all of them. So the book of Daniel is not interested in the chronological order or how the effects that happen during the time of Daniel happen. He was only interested in the moral lesson. He was only interested in the spiritual lesson. So the book of Daniel is not an history per se. Because it's not arranged in chronological order. Having had this background at the back of your mind, come back again to Daniel chapter 5. I read verse 30. In that night was Bessasa, the king of the Cadians, slain, and Darius the Median took the kingdom, being about three score and two years old. Look at that verse 30. And the verse 31. Between verse 30 and 31, there are a lot of events. Certain things have happened which the Bible, the book of Daniel did not record. Darius did not become the king immediately after the death of Bersasa. Immediately Bersasa died. The kingdom was transferred to Medes. And the Median, who took over the kingdom immediately after the death of Bersasa, his name is called Cyrus. His name is called what? Cyrus. And let me establish the facts. Look at extra chapter one. Extra chapter one. Extra chapter one. Open your Bible. Extra chapter one. I read first one. Now, that was the first Median who became the king when the kingdom was given to the Medes. Ezra chapter 1, verse 1. Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, king of what? King of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jerusalem might be fulfilled, the Lord tear up the spirit of Cyrus, King of Persia is no longer the kingdom of Babylon. It's now the kingdom of Medes and Persia. And Cyrus, we are talking about, is a Median. How do we know? 
Look at Ezra chapter 5. Ezra chapter 5. Are you there? I read first 2. So let me read from verse 1. Then Darius. Then Darius. The king made a decree. And such was made in the house of the rose. Where the treasure were laid up in Babylon. And there was found at Akimeta. In the palace that is in the province of Medes. Where is the palace of? In the province of Medes, not in the province of Babylon. In the province of Medes. A rule. And there was a record thus written. In the first year of Cyrus the king, it was Cyrus the king that made that decree. In the first year of Cyrus the king, the Cyrus the king made a decree concerning the house of God at Jerusalem. Who searched out the decree? Darius. So Cyrus was a king before Darius. It was a decree that was made during the time of Cyrus that Darius was searching for. So Darius didn't become the king after the death of Bessasa. Is that understood now? So the person that became the king immediately after the death of Bessasa is Cyrus. And Cyrus becoming the king had been prophesied before by Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 45. Isaiah chapter 45. Isaiah chapter 45. Look at first, first 44, 45, first one. Thus hear the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have owed him, to subdue nations before him. And I will lose the loins of kings to open before him the two lived gates. And the gates I not be shut, and I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in shoulder the bars of iron, and I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I the Lord. Which call thee by thy name, I am the God of Israel. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, my elect, I have even called thee by thy name. I have so named thee, though thou hast not known me. First five, I am the Lord, there is no else, there is no God beside me. I guided thee that thou hast. Though thou hast not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord, there is none else. Isaiah had prophesied about Cyrus before Cyrus was born. Isaiah had prophesied about Cyrus before Cyrus became the king. That a day is coming that Cyrus is going to become the king of Israel. Do you know 
that there are some precious things that have been said about you too before you are born. There are some great things that are written about you too before you are delivered into this world. Concerning Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 1. Open your Bible. Concerning Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 1. Are you there with me? Look at verse 4. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. God was telling Jeremiah that before you was born at all, God has ordained him a prophet unto the nations. God has set him apart as a prophet to many nations. That is even before you was born. That is even before you was formed in the belly. Brothers and sisters, Cyrus was not born before Isaiah prophesied about him that he's going to become king. And what Isaiah said about him came to pass exactly. Why? Because the counsel of the law standeth sure. Look at Psalm 33. Psalm 33. Psalm 33, I read first 11. The counsel of the law standeth forever. The thought of his heart to all generations. So whatever God has said concerning your life, in the name of Jesus Christ, it will come to pass. Nothing can hinder the plan of God for your life. Nothing can change the plan of God for your life. The Bible says the cancer of the Lord stand there forever. The thought of his heart to all generations. Look at Isaiah 46. Isaiah chapter 46, verse 9. Isaiah chapter 46, verse 9. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, there is none like me. Verse 10. Declaring the end from the beginning and from the ancient times, the things that are not yet done, say, My cancer, I stand. My cancer, I stand. And I will do all my pleasure. Everything that God has spoken concerning your life, witches cannot change it. Wizard cannot change it. Devil cannot change it. The only person that can change it is yourself. The Bible says, if God be for us, who can be against us? If God is on your side, nobody can be against you. Witches cannot be against you. Wizard cannot be against you. Satan cannot be against you. No power of darkness can hinder you. Everything that God said concerning Cyrus as prophesied by prophet Isaiah 
came to pass exactly. Somebody say exactly. And everything good thing God has spoken concerning you will come to pass exactly. Look at Jeremiah chapter 29. Jeremiah chapter 29, I read verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. See the Lord, thought of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Every good thing that the God of heaven has spoken concerning you will come to pass. Nothing can change there. Look at first thing. Open your Bible. First King. Hallelujah. Open your Bible to First King. First King, chapter 10. Are you there? And first king chapter 8. Sorry. First king chapter 8. Are you there? I read verse 56. First King chapter 8. I read verse 56. Are you there? Blessed be the Lord that had given rest unto his people Israel according to all that he promised. They had not faith one word of all his good promise, which he promised by the hand of Moses his servant. They had no faith, one word, of all his good promise, which he promised by the hand of Moses his servant. None of the promise of God concerning your life we fail. You know why? The Bible says all the promises of God, they are yea and amen. Second Corinthians chapter 1. Second Corinthians chapter 1. Open your Bible. Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. Look at verse 20. Are you there? Verse 20. Look at it. For all the promises of God in him are yea and in him amen unto the glory of God by us. Every good promise of God for your life will come to pass. If God can speak something concerning Cyrus, and Cyrus, the Bible says, he doesn't know God. And yet God brings that promise to pass. How much more you that know God? Every good promise of God for your life we come to pass in Jesus' name. The only thing you need to do is believe God. The Bible says, believe God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophet, so shall you prosper. Believe. Don't doubt the promise of God for your life. No matter how great it is, Whatever has been the delay, it will not tarry. It will certainly come. His promise concerning your life will come to pass in Jesus' name. He promised Sarius, even before he was born, to the prophet Isaiah. And he brought the promise to pass. Every good promise of God concerning your life will come to pass. So after Bethsaida, Sarius became the king. Ezra chapter 1, verse 1. Ezra chapter 1, verse 1. After Bethsaida, Cyrus became the king. Ezra chapter 1. Now in the first year of Cyrus, 
king of Persia, that the word of the law by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, and he made a proclamation through all his kingdom and put it also in writing, say, Thus hear Cyrus, king of Persia. The Lord God of heaven has given me all the kingdoms of the earth and has charged me to build an house for him at Jerusalem, which is at Judah, who is there among you of his people. Is God be with him? And let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the house of God of Israel. He is the God, which is in Jerusalem. And whosoever remained in any place where he sojourned, let the men of his place help him with liver and with gold and with goose and with beast beside the freeway offering for the house of God that is in Jerusalem. Then rose up the chief of the fathers of Judah and Benjamin and the priest and the Levite with all them whose spirit God had raised to go up to build the house of the law, which is in Jerusalem. Farsi, and all they that were about them strengthened their hands with vessels of silver, with gold, with goose, with beasts, and with precious things, besides all that was willingly offered. Verse 7. Also Cyrus, the king, brought forth the vessel of the house of the law, which Nebuchadnezzar had brought forth out of Jerusalem and had put them in the house of his God. First A, even those did Cyrus king of Persia bring forth by the hand of Mithredat, the treasurer, and number them unto Sesbasa, the prince of Judah. Now, very, very important. You should listen. Jarius knew, I mean, Sarius knew that he did not become the king for nothing. He knew there is a purpose why God made him the king of the whole world. First and foremost, let's just take it bit by bit. God had prophesied that the children of Judah will be carried to Babylon and they will be there for 70 years. 70 good years. Look at the book of Jeremiah. Open your Bible to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29. Jeremiah, chapter 29. Open your Bible. Jeremiah, chapter 29. Are you there? I read from verse 4. Thus hear the Lord of fools the God of Israel, unto all that are carried away captive, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon. Build ye houses, and dwell in there, and plant gardens, and eat the fruit of them. Take ye wives, and beget sons and daughters, and take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husband that they may be a sons and daughter that he may be increased there and not diminished verse 7 and seek ye the peace of the city whither i have caused you to be carried away captive and pray unto the lord for it for in the peace Thereof shall ye have peace. Verse 8. 
For those here, the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, let not your prophets and your diviner that be in the midst of you deceive you, neither hearken to your dreams, which ye cause to be dream, for they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. I have not sent there. Sear the law. Fast Listen carefully. For those hear the law that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word towards you in causing you to return to this place. God told the children of Judah that they are going to be in captivity in Babylon for 70 good years. And they were in Babylon for 70 good years. And when the 70 years was <coughs> coming to an end, one day Daniel was reading the book of Jeremiah and he saw it that the children of Israel will be in Babylon for 70 good years. Daniel chapter 9. Daniel chapter 9. Daniel chapter 9. In the first year of Darius, the son of Asaros, or the seed of the Medes, which was made the king over the realm of the Cadians, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he will accomplish 70 years in the dissolution of Jerusalem. And I set my face unto the Lord to see by prayer and supplication with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes, and ashes, and I pray unto the Lord God, and to the Lord my God, and made my confession, and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him, and to, to them that keep his commandment. He was praying, because he realized 70 years is already passed. And God said, after 70 years, I will return all the captives. But immediately, it was getting to 70 years. Cyrus became the king of Persia. And in order to fulfill this promise of Jeremiah, he made a decree. Look at again at Extra chapter 1. Ezra chapter 1. Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, and he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it in writing, say, Don't see it. Thus yet Cyrus, king of Persia, the Lord God of heaven has given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he has charged me to build him an house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. In Judah. So immediately he made an announcement that any of the captives that want to return back to Judah is free. But for a purpose. And the purpose is that they will go and build the house of God. 
verse 3. Who is there among you all of his people? Is God be with him and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the house of the Lord God of Israel? He is God, which is in Jerusalem. He made an announcement. And the Bible says, as many people as God stir up their spirit, they volunteer and they want to go back to Judah. They want to go back to Jerusalem. Look at look at verse 4. And whosoever remaineth in any place, whosoever remaineth in any place where he sojourneth, let the men of his place help him with liver, and with gold, and with goose, and with beast, beside the free will offering for the house of God that is in Jerusalem. Verse 5. Then rose up the chief of the fathers of Judah and Benjamin, and the priests and the Levites, with them whose spirit God has raised to go up to build the house of the Lord, which is at Jerusalem. So they volunteer. They said, We are ready. We will go back to Judah. We will go back to Jerusalem. We go there to go and build the house of our God. Look at verse 6. And all they that were about them strengthened their hands with vessels of silver and gold, with goose and with beasts, and we precious thing beside all that was willingly offered. In other words, the people that remained in the land of Babylon support those people that are going. They support them with gold, they support them with silver, they support them with beasts that they are going to use for as a means of transportation. They support them with precious things. They encourage them. Why was all this thing happening? Because the time to favor Jerusalem, the five time to favor Judah, as called. Look at Psalm one o two. Psalm one o two. I read verse thirteen. Psalm 102, verse 13. Are you there? Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time is called. For thy servants I take pleasure in her stones and favor in the dust thereof. When it is time to favor you too, People will arise. There is a set time in God's plan for your favor. And it will call. And when the time call, everybody will arise to help you. Destiny helper will arise to help you. People will support you with their money. People will support you with their substance, people will be ready to assist you in any way. There is time for everything in God's program. So when the 70 years that God mentioned as expired, it was then the time to favor Jerusalem. It was then the time to favor Judah. It was the time to favor Zion. It was then, then the time to rebuild the house of God in Jerusalem. So God stirred up the heart of Cyrus the king. And he made a proclamation. 
Look at Second Chronicle. Second Chronicle. Open your Bible. Second Chronicle. Open your Bible. Because your time is also coming. Your time of favor. Your time of blessing. When men and women will arise to help you, to assist you, in the name of Jesus. Look at Second Chronicle chapter 36. I read verse 22. Look at verse 22. Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord spoken by the mouth of Jeremiah might be accomplished, the Lord star up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia. The Lord star up his spirit. And when God star up his spirit, what happened? That he made the proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in writing, say, Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth are the Lord God of heaven given me. And he has charged me to build him an house in Jerusalem, who is in Judah, who is there among all of his people. The Lord is God be with him. Let him go home. Because it was the time to favor Jerusalem. It was the time to favor Zion. It was time to rebuild the rooms of the house of God. And when your own time comes, God will start up the art of men. God will start up the art of women. God will start up the art of everybody. They will take pleasure in you. They will be ready to help you. They will be ready to assist you. The only reason why you are begging and nobody is even ready to help you is because your time has not come and it's going to come in Jesus' name. I say your time is going to come in Jesus' name. Look at Psalm 130, Psalm 102. I read again verse 13. Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion. For the time to favor her, yea, the said time is come for thy servant, for thy servant take pleasure in a stone and favor the dust thereof. When it is time to favor you, everything, everybody will be interested in you. Men and women will support you. Everybody will want to identify with you. Everybody want to be with you. It is an indication your time has come. And it will come very soon in the name of Jesus. Look at Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11. Look at verse 11. He has made everything beautiful in his time. Also he has said the word in their heart. So that no man can find out the work of God that he had made from the beginning to the end. God will make all things beautiful when it is time in your life. He will make men and women to fear for you. Your time is coming. Don't give up. Your time is coming. Don't be discouraged. Your time is coming. People will come to your light when your time comes. Look at Isaiah chapter 60. Isaiah chapter 60, I read first one. Open your Bible. Isaiah chapter 60, I read first one. Look at first one. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is written upon thee. For behold, darkness I cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee, and the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. When it is time, everybody will come to your light. Everybody wants to be identified with you. Your glory will shine forth. The glory of God will be seen upon you. Everybody will take pleasure in you. 
Everybody wants to assist you. Gold and silver will no longer be your problem. They will begin to come left and right. It is time to favor you. It came for Jerusalem to be favored. It came to Judah to be favored. It came for Zion to be favored. Everybody take pleasure in the stone diaro and the dust diaro. When it is your time to be favored, everybody will take pleasure in you. I see you being favored. I see you being helped. I see you being assisted. I see you being ministered to. Your time is coming. But wait patiently. Wait patiently for God. Wait patiently. Hebrew chapter 10, as I ran on. Hebrew chapter 10, open your Bible. Hebrew chapter 10, open your Bible. Hebrew chapter 10. I read verse 36. For ye have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, you might inherit the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come, and will not tarry. Now be just silently by faith. But if any man draw back, my souls, I have no pleasure in death. Don't say because I can't endure any longer. Don't say because I have waited and waited and waited and waited, nothing happened. Something will happen. Your time of favor is coming. And I want to tell you, it has come. Now is the time. Now is the day of salvation. Now is the day of accepted time. Don't give up. The Lord will beautify your life with glory. The Lord will beautify your life with honor. For 70 years, the house of God in Jerusalem was lying fallow, ruined. But when the time to favor her come, God stirred up the heart of Cyrus, the king of Persia, and he made a proclamation. And people began to show interest. And everybody was running netter scatter to be able to see that the house of God at Jerusalem is rebuilt. And I want to tell you, your life will be rebuilt in Jesus' name. Don't give up. Don't be discouraged. Just a little while. He that we call, we call. And your time of favor, we call. Bow down your head and let's talk to God in prayer. Just say, Lord, I thank you that despite what I'm passing through now, there is still hope for me. My time of favor is coming. I believe it. I accept it. I will wait for it. And my time of favor will certainly come. And it will come. Your time of favor is coming. Your time of blessing is coming. Your time of greatness is coming. Your time of divine visitation is coming. Don't give up. Don't be discouraged. Don't give up. The Lord will remember you for good. In the name of Jesus.